Hey guys, it's Richard Jefferson from the Road Tripping Pod. Have you been thinking about going to a basketball game, traveling somewhere, you know, just getting out for a good trip? Have you been stalling on booking that trip like I have? Well, the nerds at Nerd Wallet are here to help you take the first steps towards making your dream a reality. Nerd Wallet's team of nerds research hundreds of the top credit cards, mortgages, and more so you can easily compare and find what's right for you. Maybe you're looking for some quality in person fun with your friends. Maybe watching a little bit of NBA playoffs. Nerd Wallet can help you compare and find the right travel credit card with a sign up bonus to use on flights to the game. Ready to compare your way there? Take the first step by discovering the smartest credit cards, mortgages, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NMLS 1617539. Get on Team Shack with WinBet. We're playing parlays, boosting odds and laying the wildest prop bets. Don't miss another game. Download the WinBet sport betting app today. Sign up today and win $200 in free bets when you place a $50 first-time wager on a straight bet or parlay. Offer subject to change, terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in a state where play-through WinBet is available. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. Richard actually wanted to, back in the day, have his own show where he just ranted for 10 minutes. Would anyone listen to that? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, not, it's, it's therapeutic. Like, it's not about listeners. Welcome to another edition of Road Trip, and we continue to talk all things NBA and some off-the-court stories that have caught our eye this week. I'm actually going to give you credit for this next one. We're moving on because I thought you were crazy. However, I deserve a little bit of credit too because I said on this podcast. That was great. No, I'm, I'm Dallas done with... was down 1-0 and you guys basically laughed at me. Channing did. Sorry, talking about you again, Channing, when you can't defend yourself. Channing laughed at me for thinking that the Mavericks, I wanted to see how they would come out because I actually thought that they could make some noise and make it a series. Here we are tied to two. However, you did say. No, wait, 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 Richard... wait. Let me say, let me say this. What did I say? What did I say? about that series no no i'm saying uh, you're going, you did say oh that luca needs to sh to score less and let others get involved and um have you looked at the numbers i think you did the last two games actually <laughs> yeah well they, uh, shoot, they, they they thought he should have got off of it more they thought he should have got off of it more even after ga two games over 30 both losses luca under 30 two wins now you got to give his teammates credit. His those boys balled, but so, part <laughs> I mean, of it is like a lot of times. It look the difference I think with their team versus some of the other teams with great players. And Luca's cast <laughs> is not that great. Luca's cast is, with all due respect, Luca's. I, I I got a ton of respect for everybody on that on that roster. They're bad men, but like Brunson is his second best player, right? Like Brunson's his second best player. Like he would be the the fourth best player on on Milwaukee, right? But he's 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 Luca's second best player. But those guys have to when he throws you the ball, you got to go do something. A lot of times they'll mm -hmm. do something and he's asking for the ball because he's he's an amazing player and it's like sometimes you just got to go and you got to create for yourself and others. That gives him time off. Every possession that he's on the floor that Brunson runs a pick and roll and scores or gets a foul and shoots two free throws, those are minutes that that Luka didn't have to move. And that helps a player. That's what Milwaukee's struggling with with right now late in games is that, you know, they're getting burnt out. They can't maintain their their pace of play. And so if if you're going to help your team and you're anybody not named Luca on the Mavs, you got to be aggressive. Like and when it, you know, okay. People, you know this. So you remember in 2018 where Bron went to the finals, no Kyrie, um and he took that team all, all you know, him and all those guys went to the oh, finals. Oh, I was there. Some Jeff of the guys Green. were like, you know, it was Jeff Green. Yeah, I'm going to say Jeff Green and some of those guys, it was their first time playing with Braun. And one of the things that I told Braun, I told Jeff Green about playing with Braun, I was like, hey, when he throws you the ball in the possession, that's your chance. That's your chance. So do something. If you don't like it, he's going to ask for the ball. You're not going to get another chance. You're not. He's going to go do what he has to do. He's either going to throw it to somebody for a shot at the end or he's going to try and score it himself. You're not going to get another chance. So if he drives and kicks it to you, be ready to make a decision. Catch and shoot, catch and drive, do whatever you got to do. And so for some people, 
they they don't understand. Like in the postseason, Braun gonna keep it in his hands more. Luca gonna keep it in his hands more. And so you know, I just I look at some of those guys and I just think like, hey, you gotta be you gotta be aggressive in the right way. I agree with that. Do you think that it's going? Do you think that it's going to six? You want it to go to six. I want it to go to six. If I if it goes to six, I get to call the game. I want it to go to six so bad. Um, I want to go to six so I, it's bad. Going, obviously, so it's, and uh, wait, wait, wait. It's going to six. No, no, I, I'm not doing that game. I'm doing Golden State Memphis if it goes six. Oh, I, that's right. I was six, like, wait Golden a minute. Okay, if, yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah. If okay. Memphis, yeah, yeah, if Memphis, yeah, I was supposed to go do game six. I was supposed to go do game six, and then um, now I'm going to go do possible game six Memphis. So I'm rooting okay. for Memphis. Like, I don't care Golden State fans. Like, I just want – I want to work. I want more games. Work. I think it's fun. I just want to work. I want to be in the so, building when you guys close them out. Is the Phoenix-Dallas years going past six? No, uh, ooh, I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think no, no, I don't think so. I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna go six, six. And Phoenix. And it, look, I don't know. I I don't know that one because I'll say this: from talking to tons of people in the Dallas organization, like I played there, I know so many people there. They lost eleven straight before they won these two, right? Mm-hmm. And so they lost eleven straight. And I'm not saying that they were like not optimistic, but you're also not stupid. Right. They're like, this team has been the best team in basketball. They have no deficiencies. Our other guys aren't playing well, like outside of Luca. And we've lost to these guys 11 straight. They were saying all the right things, but you could see that they were like, fuck, here we go. But now they're starting to believe. And now that they believe, I think this series definitely has a chance to go to seven. But if you would have asked me before game three started, I've been like, man, this shit might be a sweep, man. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Both of you did. Just from the energy. Now, I'm not talking about off my – I'm not talking about my, my space. Knowledge. I'm talking about from being there okay. and having to do the interviews and now having to talk to, like, different people and, the like, fans. And, like, they seem – defeated is not the right word. They just felt like they knew that they had a task in front of them. And for anybody that doesn't believe that – there is a reason why Luca hurt his calf in the last game of the year and why Golden State was playing their guys the last game of the years. Everybody was trying to avoid Phoenix. Luca got hurt in a game trying to avoid the Phoenix Suns. They lose that game. I don't know if they won. I think they lost the game, and now they got the Phoenix Suns. So if you're wondering if your team is confident, they weren't very confident at the 82nd game of the year. Just yeah, saying. That, that matters. Hashtag. Um, all right, going into the last series to talk about. What is going on in the Heat mind right now? In the Heat's mind right now. You were up to get you've Duncan, been there. Get, you get, were up to get Duncan or get, get Duncan Robinson's <laughs> ass on that floor. <laughs> you were up to uh, get Billy Hoyle to start two, shooting threes. Going back home. No Kyle Lowry for game five. If you're the Heat, <laughs> you're you're mad at yourself. If you're the Heat, you're mad at yourself because Philly Philly's good, especially that they got Joel back, obviously. But I'm saying that like Philly's not really like Philly's Philly is one of those teams that like if you just do what you're supposed to do and don't play terrible, like you should be fine. Especially a team as good as Boston, Miami, Milwaukee. As long as you don't play terrible and don't let Embiid go for like 50, you should be fine. And they're not sh- – they're playing terribly. They played terribly in those two games. Like, for their standard, like, they're shooting, like, historically low numbers. Can't make a shot. Everybody's wondering why Duncan Robinson's not playing. Like, at, like you know, I'm not going to sit up here and question Eric Spolstra. Let's just say that. When I'm, I'll evaluate his moves after. Yeah, I'll, I'll evaluate his moves after, after I know all of their results. But I'm not going to sit up here and second-guess that man. Now nah, he's he's he is he will he has earned my silence, right? And so <laughs> thank you, uh, Jesus. He has earned How my silence. How do I silence. get there? Yes, <laughs> yeah, geez, he's one of the few people. So I know it. So I get it. So that for me is just more of like we'll see. I expect to see Duncan Robinson and see if they can get some shots from him. We've seen not great things from James Harden, but in Game Four, obviously the thirty-one six of ten from three. What version of James Harden does this team need with Joel? That version, that version, that version there, but I don't, they can't get that version. So, okay. You really think that he needs that kind of output in terms of winning? To win a championship? To win a championship, yes. Not to just oh, okay. beat the, because yeah, yeah. you got to okay. understand, there's, 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's, mm-hmm. like, we're in. They got to win this round, that ra- another round, and another round. Mm-hmm. Like, think about that. Like, we're in the second round here. Like, this shit's gonna get harder. They're gonna get the winner of Milwaukee, Boston on the other side, right? James Harden's against those two defenses. James Harden's gonna have to hit some shots and some big shots and score some points, right? Like. Yeah. And then after that, they're going to get the possible winner of Golden State and Phoenix. If if, if they tried to go against <gasps> Golden State with those assassins on the perimeter, and don't get me wrong, Joel will have 100 because he's just huge. But if they tried to go against that, and, and James Harden is shooting, you know, struggling to shoot from three, I know Golden State's not shooting the ball well either right now. But ultimately, Steph, Jordan Poole, and Clay, shit. You better start scoring the ball. You better start looking to score the ball because, with all due respect to James, we know he's not stopping anybody. So, like, he they okay. need that version or at least, like, a little bit less. Just a little bit less. But he can't have 11 straight games of not scoring 25. That's not going yeah. to get them to a championship. And I don't think that's what they signed up for either. And I don't think James Harden would have guessed that that's what it would have been when he took on that opportunity. Agreed. Um, okay. So obviously if you're listening closely, Richard is pretty conflicted because he just had golden state in the conference finals. However, he wants the Grizzlies to win at least to get to game six, um, because he gets to call the game. Call the game. Let's take a quick time out because we have a few great products that we want to tell you about this week. Hey everyone. It's Richard again for our friends at nerd wallet. You still dreaming about a trip to the NBA playoffs this year? Well, what if I told you Nerd Wallet can help you take the first steps to making that dream a reality? Nerd Wallet's team of nerds research hundreds of the top credit cards, mortgages, and more so you can easily compare and find what's right for you. And since you're already planning on going to the playoffs, let's bring along a friend, why don't we? Nerd Wallet can help you find a travel rewards credit card with a sign up bonus to use on your hotel for the whole crew. Ready to compare your way there? Take the First step by discovering the smartest credit cards, mortgages, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NMLS one six one seven five three nine. All right, road trippers, have you heard about Price Picks? Price Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Our entire crew loves it, and we know you will too. Price Picks has the best NBA prop game across the market. They offer more NBA props than any other DFS operator, and they offer every player and stat category you can think of. Want to get in in the game now? There's no better time with the NBA playoffs in full swing. All new users that make their first deposit and use the promo code ROADTRIPPIN will receive an instant 100% deposit match up to $100. All you have to do is pick two to five players and select an over-under on their daily projections. And you can win up to 10 times on any entry. It's just you versus the projected numbers. Prize Picks even allows mixed sport entries. Use the award-winning Prize Picks app either on the App Store or Google Play today. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It is that easy. Price Picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals. Make this year's NBA playoffs a little more exciting and enjoy a special bonus offer on us. Check out prizepicks.com and use the promo code ROADTRIPPIN or go to your app store and download the app today. Remember, Road Trippers, Price Picks is daily fantasy made easy. You've been traveling a lot and you've been taking your athletic greens with you. You've been taking the travel packs of your athletic yes. greens with you. Uh. No, 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 wait, we, look, it's the same reoccurring thing. Like, where is my extras? Like, who, where is my extras? Oh, you need more. Still? You still need more? I need more. I need more, yes. I'm, I'm oh, running through I must it. have left your address off. Every day I must have left scoop. your address off. Apparently, Channing needs his athletic That's greens, rude. too, and he's been waiting on his order because he is under the weather. Um, I still take them daily because, obviously, athletic greens, in case you don't know, have 75 different kind of vitamins and minerals. They are packed, whether it's in the scoop or the travel packs that Rich takes with him for his traveling here in the postseason. Um, it's good for, obviously, your immune support, the clarity, the energy, et cetera. But the one thing I have noticed, I don't know if you notice this as a man, Richard, I'm not sure. I don't live in a man's body, but I've noticed a difference in bloating. So women, check that out. Um, I am a big advocate of that de-bloatation, um, consistently having taken my athletic greens. So I know Rich is a big supporter of it. Supporter of it. Channing is as well. Let's go. Send um, we me shout more. him out all the time. Send him more, please, um, because we mean it. So to make it easy for you guys, our listeners, our viewers, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune support of vitamin D and five free travel packs that we love with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash roadtrippin. Take ownership of your health 
and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Again, it's athleticgreens.com slash road tripping and get started today. Angie's list is now Angie and caring for your home is easier than ever. You can still find top local pros, read ratings and reviews and see quotes at no cost. But now you can also compare upfront prices on hundreds of home services and book one instantly all from the app. You can even get Angie to handle your project from start to finish. So when you need a different kind of pro to knock it out of the park, leave it to Angie. Get the Angie app or visit Angie.com to get started. Let's venture off into some stories and topics for the last few minutes, Rich, that um, are not really about the playoffs. I'm going to start with this one. Actually, this has something to do with the playoffs, and I, you, I know that you are very adamant about this, and you have talked about this in the past even before what just happened with Chris Paul and his family, which understand the frustration there for CP3 and his family and for any athlete that has to go through something like this. After the Mavs fan was ejected and banned in Dallas for giving Chris Paul's family unwanted hugs, Sunside coach Monty Williams congrats him as well on Coach of the Year, came out and said that players' families should have their own seating section at games. What are your thoughts? These are, these are the times where I get myself in trouble because <laughs> no, no, these are times I get myself in trouble because first of all, they are right. Chris Paul, these people, and I'm not going to tell anybody how to spend their money, where to spend their money, where to seat their family, where to do any of these things. That is not it. The only thing I can say is this, and it doesn't, I can't, there are things that I can't control as a player when I'm on the floor. I can't control who is in the area with my mom, my my wife, my kids. I can't control that. And truth be told, the play- postseason is not the time to be worried about that. For instance, when I when I played for the Nets, Byron Scott, uh, we would do like a big dinner before uh, we would do a big dinner before um, um, the postseason, and it would be like wives, girlfriends. It was like a sit down dinner, really really nice, and. This was his thing. He gave all the wives a gift and all the girlfriends a gift. It was just like a, like, like a charm or something. And the gift, he goes, and he goes, now, now, ladies, this, this gift is because if you're annoyed about something, just, just wait till the postseason's over. If they're, if you're, if you're frustrated about something, just wait till the postseason's over. If he's spending more time at the gym because he has to, if he's traveling more, if he's stressed more, whatever it is, this is that thank you gift in advance because this is the most stressful, grueling thing of our, our of our profession that we're about to embark on. So it was more of like a gesture of like, hey, there are, there are things that are about to happen that you can't control, right? So like control what you can control. My point is this in the postseason when you're having your mo- and all of that stuff happened, make sure everybody understand all of this stuff happened after Chris Paul had already been um, had been um, uh, fouled out of the game. So none of this like impacted his play. But like. If you're 100 percent focused on games and it's Mother's Day, I have no I understand. I want my mom in the building. I want my wife in the building. I want my kids in the building. It's Mother's Day. You should be able to feel comfortable enough to there. But a lot of times it's like put them in a suite so you don't have to worry about a drunk, drunk fan. Put them there. And they were directly behind the sun's bench, which you should have. You don't want to be staring out and seeing something going on. You want to be make sure that all of your teammates and all of this stuff. So Chris Paul did that aspect right. Have them right behind your bench. So your security is there, your team teammates are there the staff is there everyone they're basically just a fourth row right of of the phoenix suns which is smart but i just think that like sometimes in these hostile environments where people have been drinking all day and partying all day and they're looking forward to it and they're just so amped up that's a tough spot for people to have their kids in and to have their families in because while i might just be like chris paul you're a bum chris paul you're a bum you say that enough next next to chris paul's brother that might frustrate Chris Paul's brother, right? And then Chris Paul is like, oh, that's BS, BS. Well, I'm a Mavericks fan. I've been a Mavericks fan for 20 years and blah, blah, blah. Like, I think this, this, and all of a sudden, those are just tensions that are flaring because they're emotionally charged environments. And that is not to blame Chris Paul's people. That's not to blame anybody here. That is just speaking on the environment that is present when you're talking about the postseason. And so 
I just think as players, you have to protect your family. And sometimes that could even mean not putting them in that situation and putting them in a suite and making sure that like the one thing that you don't want to be stressed or worried about is that. So try and control what you can control. But I think that also goes for a fan as a human being. Let's let's kind of oh, grow yeah. up a little bit. Let's understand and recognize. That message, but that message is not going to be received, though, Allie. I, I, I know it's not going to be received per se, but I agreed with Chris Paul's tweet. It's like you can hold us to a certain standard, but when it just becomes being a respectful human being, don't cross the lines. Don't blur the lines. You're at a sporting event. Agreed. Life is a little bit more than but that. Like, don't touch the family. You don't need but, to touch the family. You don't I, need to attack them as a you person. Agree. Judge the sport. No one's changing. Yes, but six months from now, when there's another drunk person or another situation, this is not like this. I, I agree. We are all on the same page. Are we all on the same page? <laughs> my only yes. My oh, like this person shouldn't do that. But in that moment, you're not teaching life lessons. In that moment, you're not teaching life lessons at at three thirty on a Sunday. You shouldn't have to. I, that's my what point. I'm saying. I'm and just it was like a kid. With, a, with an adult. There's with a lot of things of, that we like, shouldn't have. There's like, there, sorry. I, I, see, this is the thing. See, yeah, see, you're you're thinking, Fan, you're thinking, but, but like, we can you're sit thinking here, I guess. retroactively. Let me, let me I'm just, thinking pro. I'm thinking proactively. Oh, I agree, and I, I, but I also think that it should be maybe a section. To your point, you don't want to tell people how to spend their money, and obviously a section roped off yes, by I the don't league want to do that. or that's already yeah, that's already set up. Uh, but I also think that there's a difference between putting your hands on an individual and saying something out of emotion because you're at a sporting event. So I understand you probably can't control what comes yes. out of someone's mouth Agreed. per se. I mean, there's things that you should not say. But to physically put your hands on yeah. another individual, you shouldn't do that to another fan, let alone an athlete's yeah, the, family member. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, and and look, man, I've had Sorry. random people come up and try and hug me, right? And hit me, and you have too, right? Like... And it's just like, oh, I just, I can have a hug. Like, and you're just like, uh, hi. COVID. Hi. No. I'm not a hugger. Um, no, look, I, I think it's sad that the, I think that that's, yeah, I think that's sad that, that the way some of that stuff has gone down. Um, but ultimately, I'm going to think proactively in that moment. And it's like, hey, everybody, we're going to get a suite just to make sure nobody has to worry about our family and friends. If you want to get two seats someplace else, like for what and again you shouldn't have to do that i agree there's a lot of things in life we shouldn't have to do but at the end of the day we're going to be proactive right mm -hmm. it's like well and at this point i don't that's think just that that's just the best we way we have any choice we've seen too many things happen that it's just what needs to be done um okay i have two other yeah. things for you before i let you go before we conclude this edition of road trip in shack says he would dominate Rudy Gobert in his prime. He would dominate. He would dominate Rudy Gobert. I no, Rudy. I love you, bro. Rudy's a bad man. No, Shaq would dominate anybody. Shaq would dominate anybody. We there's there's the, he's not lying. You put Shaq prime, end of prime, beginning of prime. He dominates anyone. Like there there's no different than there's only been one physical specimen like Giannis, just like we've only seen one physical specimen like Braun. Shaq was even fucking bigger. That's not a lie. And Rudy, how about this? This is what I'll give Rudy. This is what I'll give Rudy. Rudy would do as good as anybody on the defensive end. That's the would, best I'll give him. Would Shaq dominate Braun? Rudy would do as good as anybody. What? What? Yes. What? Yes. Shaq would dom. What? He wouldn't even see Bron. That's part of the reason why the Golden State Warriors, when like you talk about Draymond playing the five, they would have had Shaq made it so you had to carry two to three bigs on your roster just to have you know enough fouls because it was impossible to guard him without fouling, and you would try to wrap him up to make him shoot his free throws. So you were always in foul trouble, always in foul trouble. So you had to carry two three bigs on your roster. Shaq made people get paid because they would overpay for Eric Dampier because they needed more bigs and he was the best on the market and they needed someone to guard Shaq. And so they gave that man too much money. Like Shaq was getting people paid because they just needed extra bodies and extra fouls. Why do I feel like, like that no, was such there's a strong no, take? Shaq would even see Bron. 
Jeez. <laughs> no. Oh, God. No. <laughs> um, okay. I want to end on this one because I think it's funny because I think you have something. Did you, by chance, what? see the reporter at the F1 race? And I say, no. I say this because I know you love Duke so much. The reporter, Martin Brundle, Ugh. who went up to um, no. Paulo Bencaro and thought he was Patrick Mahomes. Don't, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't okay, seen. So I, I, have I saw you... the clip. I didn't see that. Okay, so obviously you're now on this side. Have you ever mistaken someone like this or on this side of the mic? Have you had those moments where you had no idea who you were interviewing, but you had to interview them? Especially because you're now doing red carpets and stuff for extra. Yeah, you you, you, you like, have when you're like, yes, not no no no. Let me say this: not from a prep and homework standpoint, but when you're working the red carpet mm -hmm. and it's like you don't know who the fifth actor is <laughs> and he, you know, and how they might be looking on screen. They might be, you know, a drug dealing coach on screen, but then he walks up in a suit looking like you. You don't you don't know what you, like that. No. I would not. I have not. I would not get like Patrick Mahomes, one of the most recognizable NFL <laughs> players of the last like fifty years. I would not get him mistaken. I can see the similarities, but at the same point in time, no, no. Like, has anyone just, ever those come are up things to you, you Ali? You know this. What? You know that this job is about your homework, right? But yeah, yeah. Right. It's about your homework. But it's you homework. also know that I've seen two movies in my life. Um, however, I would do my homework, but if there was that moment, you never know. I mean, I'm one of those people that I don't go anywhere without my IFP in case I have to do breaking news. <laughs> um, has anyone ever come up to you and mistaken you for someone like that? Um, <laughs> I've gotten like Jason Taylor before when he did, he had just won. Oh Dancing my God. With I could stars. see that. I got that going through the airport. Yeah. Yeah. We're the can, same I, can I be honest with you? Of, of golden Brown. I, I don't know if it's well, so much that as he's the, much the better bald looking head. than I am. I have actually, because I follow his wife yeah, on Instagram and we're both big dudes. I have actually opened up my Instagram and it been the, the photo and I would be like, who is rich with? Oh, that's not Richard. <laughs> I've actually mistaken you for that individual, for that guy. Right. All right. Anyway, there you have it. There, there you have it. Yeah. It's like, who is rich? <laughs> Who is Rich hugging in a bikini and Rich shorts? Rich has a baby like, wait, boy now? That? What? what? He's in Miami? Boy, is that what? <laughs> what did this happen? What? Quite possibly. Yeah, no, I've kidding. gotten no. and when he had just that when he had just when he had just done dancing with the stars, I, I got that a bunch. Yeah, I could see that. All right. Did we forget anything? Are we missing anything? Yes. Anything else you want to get off your chest before we wrap up? I need no. you to go on a rant. I need you to go on no. a rant for one minute. 60 seconds you oh. have to have something wait, wait, wait. Within you gotta you. give me 60 seconds you have to you have, you have to give me 60, 60 seconds. seconds to like okay. think okay all right you you keep talking while i think <laughs> about the rant uh <laughs> while i think about the rant this is actually a moment that Damn. i've been living for richard actually wanted to back in the day have his own show where he just ranted for 10 minutes would anyone listen to that <laughs> No, but it's not. It's, it's therapeutic. Like it's not about listeners. Like, look, man. Like I'm retired. I save my money. I don't he actually do this sent me a voice to. memo. This is my um, our back full in the rant, day. That was eight like, minutes. minutes. I might have been. You've got drunk. twenty I seconds. Been, I, I hope you I have a topic. A, uh, you weren't. You were completely uh, sober. Let's no, see how no, good no, you no. are. I'm I, just gonna. I'm gonna be honest with you. Your uh, your buddy Chris McGee. If I gave him this floor, this stage, he would crush it, knock it out of the park. No, he would crush. It. Well, we I, first of all, it's different when like no chanting. So anything that I've felt over the last hour, I have spewed. Um, I don't winning have time. Shit. I got oh. it. Winning time. They just aired their last episode. Would you like to see a season two? And what did you think about the first season? Because I know you covered it. Give me sixty seconds. I don't think that there should be a season two. I think they covered it very, very well. I think that um, I think I want to see more stories like this that are are so, shown through a comedic lens. Now, I respect the people that are being portrayed in this are not enjoying that. I think that I think that's fair. And I think that 
if you're portraying real people, you should keep them in mind and at least be respectful if they if they're you know they should have some sort of interview they should talk to the people that are portraying them like everything should not be a caricature of them and so um i want to see more like it i think it was filmed beautifully the story was hilarious like they took you to a time and a place and they brought people back to life and kind of showed i had no idea like I'm tumble, I can sit up here and spew basketball knowledge till the fucking cows come home. I had no idea that Jerry Buss was this, and that, and that he, you know, basically bet all of his money and everything. He was selling buildings to get players. Like these things are crazy stories about what the NBA used to be a part of. Like that stuff, I found that fascinating. And so those are the factual things that I took from it. And I think it'd be really cool for them to do some football stories, have them do some stories about just pop culture moments, because that winning time was not just about basketball. It was a pop culture moment in time that starred basketball players. And I think like no different than like a Studio 54 or, you know, Woodstock, like it, those are like pivotal times in different genres that there were different people that were starred in there that it'd be really cool to see come back to life. And think about it. You just won. Well done. That was actually 90 seconds. Congratulations. It was a little bit harder, though, wasn't it? I got um, you. I will say, though, yeah. that, and think about it, unless they did something like this, though I know that it wasn't 100% factual, that there were some, like, embellished moments and scenes, we would never have known or had an idea or a glimpse. But guess what? The generations moving on from, like, 2000s, early 2000s, mid-2000s, forever, it's all going to be documented because of this thing called oh, social media. Yeah. We're not getting away with yes, anything. It's all going to be dominant. Is uh, we're, we're we're not getting away. But it was cool because I just want to make sure everyone knows about winning time. While there might be a lot of falsities, there's also a lot of things that were underplayed. Just hear that Ooh, part. Just hear there was a lot spicy. of things that were underplayed. As much as there were some false stuff, right about you know Jerry West, Korean. There's some people that were not happy with it. There was a lot of things that were underplayed. Whether it's the partying, the drug use, it was a different time. Right. It was a different time, but there were definitely some things underplayed. Could you imagine if we actually got the full truth? <laughs> Ooh, some people would no, be really you'd have to only be there for the full truth. Upset. Well, yeah. 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 All right. Rich, yeah. you're amazing. So hopefully we'll have Channing next All right. week. But Thank you. It's another Thank edition. You guys. I, I appreciate Trip. you guys. All right, Road Trippers, have you heard about Prize Picks? Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Our entire crew loves it, and we know you will too. Prize Picks has the best NBA prop game across the market. They offer more NBA props than any other DFS operator, and they offer every player and stat category you can think of. Want to get in in the game now? There's no better time with the NBA playoffs in full swing. All new users that make their first deposit and use the promo code ROADTRIPPIN will receive an instant 100% deposit match up to $100. All you have to do is pick two to five players and select an over under on their daily projections. And you can win up to 10 times on any entry. It's just you versus the projected numbers. Prize picks even allows mixed sport entries. Use the award winning Prize Picks app either on the App Store or Google Play today. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It is that easy. Prize Picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals. Make this year's NBA playoffs a little more exciting and enjoy a special bonus offer on us. Check out prizepicks.com and use the promo code ROADTRIPPIN or go to your App Store and download the app today. Remember, Road Trippers, Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy.